on this day, if you ask anyone, atheists, pagans, Wiccans, any non-believer, do you believe aliens exist? Do you believe in life in other planets? They will tell you yes. They have no evidence for it, but they will tell you yes. Why is this? Have you ever thought of that? Well, I'm going to show you one of the reasons why. Hollywood, the Illuminati groups behind the Hollywood, um, they have indoctrinated people into believing that extraterrestrials exist, that there's life on other planets. This has been done very, very carefully, and this has been done with one huge purpose, to deceive mankind. The Bible warned us that this would happen, and this is actually happening right now. I'm going to show you clips from movies from all the way from the 70s all the way to now. I'm, I'm going to even show you how they're doing it to your kids. Don't be deceived. These are not extraterrestrials. These are not ETs from other planets. These are not the missing link that evolution is looking for. These are demons. These are fallen angels. Nephilims. Who come to trick mankind. Because Satan's main agenda is to get you to worship anything except the true creator, Yahweh. Take a look at this film, and I hope you enjoy it. You can download and upload it on your channel too if you want to, and I hope you're blessed by it. Check it out. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside most secure for you and your children I couldn't help at one point in my discussions with privately with General Secretary Gorbachev when you stop to think that we're all God's children wherever we may live in the world I couldn't help but say to him just think how easy his task and mine might be in these meetings that we held if suddenly there was a threat to this world from some other species from another planet. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision. From the farthest corner of a distant galaxy and the deepest feelings of the human soul comes a fantasy to fill your heart. I feel tremendous. I'm ready to take all the world. Oh! It is everything you've dreamed of. It is nothing you expect. Oh, I can keep a secret. I won't tell anybody. It's hard to know who to trust. It is the mystery of an awesome secret. It is the miracle of everlasting life. We'll never be sick. We won't get any older and we won't ever die. Beyond the innocence of youth and the wisdom of age lies the wonder. Now... You go home. Home? But... I have so many questions. Do we get to come back? This was just the first step. In time, you'll take another. But other people need to see what I've seen. They need to see... This is the way it's been done for billions of years. But small moves, Ellie. Small moves.
historic and unprecedented event has occurred. The question of whether or not... Now, to everyone's surprise, the ship didn't come to a stop over Manhattan or Washington or Chicago, but instead coasted to a halt directly over the city of Johannesburg. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. 45 and the end of the war through 1989 and the end of the Cold War, we had a world view. Republican and Democratic presidents alike, from Harry Truman to George Bush, stood for freedom and stood for certain propositions that would make America strong and healthy and grow the middle class and shrink poverty and stand against communism. And after 1989, President Bush kept said, and it's a phrase that I often use myself, that we needed a new world order. And instead, Thanks to the Hubble telescope and what we know about black holes in the universe and all of that, the, the dimensions of physics are such that I would be quite surprised if in the lifetime of people that are no older than 30 here, we don't discover some form of life in another awesome. universe. Interesting discoveries, biological, on Earth, and other discoveries in the heavens that those of you who are younger will get to see unfold. You'll have all kind of problems with them, but on balance, it'll be a plus. Hooper, get off the grass! Expect all this, plus all the original special features from the DVD. Now you can experience all the action. You've always been afraid monsters were there. Scary feet, scary feet, scary feet! Oh, the kids are awake! Waiting to scare us. Twins! And a bunk bed! <laughs> but what we didn't know is that we scared them. What happened? It's flame! The enchantment, the hope, the connection has been made. Got it, got it. Don't got it. This guy doesn't fit in with the others. medical practitioners uh, that basically said it's almost at epidemic proportions. They estimate that up to four million Americans may have had an alien abduction experience as they believe. And then you've really got to wonder why is, it, why is the nature of it so deceptive? You know, if they're really here to help us as some of these contacts claim, you know, why do they go around acting deceptively? Why do they stealthily abduct people in the middle of the night? And you know, when I say it was confronting, there was some subject matter that was particularly disturbing. You know, people claim they've been taken onto a spaceship and probed in all parts of their bodies. There are sexual encounters. There seems to be some sort of almost ritual abuse that's going on. So you've got to ask, why would advanced, you know, evolved creatures, you know, kidnap people in the middle of the night and do these horrible things to them and yet, yet say, you know, we're here to help you evolve. And it's interesting that, you know, we'd like to apply, if you like, a scientific tag to it. But quite simply, it seems that these creatures claim that they fly millions of light years across the universe to basically deny the Bible, Christianity, and, and teach us almost new age beliefs.
it is God who justifies. It is God who looked at us in all of our sin and declared us righteous on account of the sacrifice of His Son. On what basis did God, in looking at us in our sin, pass His justifying sentence? Was it because we were so righteous? No, because we were unrighteous. Was it because we were so interested in the things of faith? No, because we were disinterested in the things of faith. Was it because we were so lovable just by dint of our very personalities and nature? Was it because we were so obviously religious and God was looking for religious people and he looked around and he found a few sort of religious susceptible folks who were sort of into that kind of thing and he said, now this is the kind of person that I need. Was that it? God looks down and when we were ungodly and when we were liable to death on account of our sins he declared us righteous on the basis of the sacrifice of his son it is for this reason that I quote so often the phrase from the hymn because the sinless Savior died my guilty soul is counted free for God the just is satisfied to look on him and pardon me. To look to on, look on, look on him and pardon me. Pardon, pardon. What basis did God pass his justifying sentence? Not on the basis of righteous deeds that we had done for all of our righteousnesses, where ultimately, as the prophet says, like filthy rags, even our best stuff stinks. Even our religious endeavors are futile and worthless. So unless it was on the basis of what another had done, there was absolutely no possibility of sinful men and women ever being declared in a right standing with a holy God. And it is exactly on that basis. And it is exactly on that basis.